Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy Des Reacts back with part two of SAS Jungle Rescue Operation Burris. Um, as you guys remember, in part one, we just got to the point where they just released five of the uh, captive guys, and now the SAS just got inserted, just got there. So that's where we're at. Um, if you guys enjoy this content, please smash that like button, hit the subscribe button, leave a comment on your thoughts and feelings on this. And re just a reminder, the first comment gets pinned at the top of the uh, comment section. Without further ado, I'm excited to dive back into this one. Let's get it. They will stay near the hostages until an attack is launched. Then they will be the first into action. They soon make a crucial discovery. Hidden sandbanks block the river route to Kaberi Bana. An attack by boat is immediately ruled out. First thing I want to add, just imagine how nasty some of that water is. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't know what's in there. Crocodiles, hippos, lions, and tigers, and bears, oh my, on the other side of that land, right? Like, that's got to be pretty... Pretty weird feeling. The SAS observation teams are forced to make a grueling trek through the jungle. Every step takes them deeper into West Side Boy territory. There's no turning back. Two hundred and fifty meters from Gaberi Bana. They use all their specialist training to hide, look, and listen. Powerful microphones pick up the faintest of sound waves from the rebel camp. Direct real-time observation is everything. You know everything about them, and they know nothing about you. The observation teams feed everything they see and hear back to headquarters. And all while the enemy has no idea they're there. That's what makes these dudes so special, man. They're just silent death, literally. Captain Danny Matthews, the parachute company's second in command, attends the daily planning sessions. We were given an intelligence update, which um, which was actually quite quite an eye opener in terms of the numbers that we were dealing with potentially uh, and the types of kit and equipment that they had. They learn that about 150 West Side boys are based in Kaberi Bana, a collection of about 20 ramshackle buildings and huts. The hostages are being held near Calais' house. There's jungle on three sides, too thick for a large assault force to penetrate. Roquel Creek blocks the fourth side. Just reaching the village will be difficult. There's another major problem. A further 100 West Side boys are based in Magbeni, a village 2,000 meters away on the opposite side of the river. They're armed with heavy machine guns and mortars, which could lay down a deadly barrage on anyone attacking Gaberi Bana. The planners decide a two-pronged attack is necessary. The paratroopers will take out Magbeni, while the SAS rescue the hostages in Gaberi Bana. That makes sense, you know. I know the parachute regiment's probably some type of SF for um for the UK, right? Let me know in the comments. So it makes sense though, you know, the more conventional style force or you know the tier one guys, tier two are or, or tier two guys I should say are taking out the the other town right the other little village that has a bunch of hostiles that have the mortars and all that and you want to send the best of the best to the hostage situations because they could make the best decisions you know just on the blink of an eye right so this is gonna be really good i feel like the jungle will severely hamper a british attack on kaberi bana but if one comes the west side boys have a unique weapon Voodoo. I know Monday with the thing gets them through protection in the mix itself 
go to warm. Then go was made in a team magazine. And I don't know if you guys know, but voodoo, that shit is scary, man. Dark magic, black magic, whatever you want to call it. Like, believe in the afterlife or not, like, there's, there's definitely something crazy out there. I don't know why people like to provoke it. The ritual has a profound psychological effect. Those who complete it believe they are bulletproof. Nowadays, bullets need to touch me, sir. Me Until them boys run into the SAS, we're gonna see if they're bulletproof. Go rations and constant intimidation take a heavy toll on the seven hostages. Musa's abuse is the worst. He's beaten regularly, and his dungeon is used as a latrine. My everyday. Assuming that means his bathroom is or his. Dungeon was used as a bathroom. I, I think that's what that means. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong, but I feel like that means that they're using it as a bathroom. If they are, that's foul. I hope, it, I hope they get dealt with. The I remember was to live on for another minute, another minute, another minute, hours, hours, days, days. That was what kept me going. The SAS observation teams watch and listen, but they cannot help unless an assault is launched. Their sensitive listening equipment picks up a commotion. They hear Fode Kale, the rebel leader, order Major Marshall to talk to BBC reporters via the satellite phone. He wants Marshall to tell the media the hostages are well. Marshall refuses. Use the satellite phone! Take him. Kale's retribution is terrible. The hostages are led to the edge of the jungle. The SAS hear every sound as the men prepare to die. You're gonna die. Whoa! I guarantee you, the S. The, these boys want to jump into the action, right? They want to save these boys, but there's just so many of them. It's gonna be interesting to see what they do here. I mean, it's like. What you, you're seeing your comrades, right? Like your allies, your boys from the same country lined up, ready to get a, you know, ready to get executed. And you have, you know I mean, you have guns and you see what's happening. You hear what's happening, but you can't do nothing until you give them orders. That's man. Something to think about for real. Three. <laughs> Two. What? <laughs> News of yet another mock execution sends shockwaves through the British commanders. Holy snap. That got me sweating almost. They thought they were about to die. Mock execution, bang. If you really remember what they said, they're too valuable of, you know, chess pieces. They know if one of them probably dies, you know, the whole assault force is going in there, right? Like, that's, man. I thought one of them was for sure gone. There was a renewed focus. There was a renewed vigor. There was certainly a, a tangible feel that um, the amount of brutality on, and the way in which the hostages were being treated, there was a lot of resolve to make sure that, that, that this ended and this ended quickly. British Prime Minister Tony Blair gives Operation Barris the go-ahead. Day 16. The rebels party. While Calais examines a stash of blood diamonds. The assault force makes final preparations. The soldiers are desperate for action. 
and the chance to exact retribution on the West Side Boys. These were horrible individuals who needed to be taught a lesson. The British know they can't reach the rebels by river or through the jungle. They must attack by helicopter. This means the rebels could hear them coming and execute the hostages. Kelly had said right at that very first meeting that any attempt to rescue the hostages would mean that they would kill the hostages outright. Success will depend on the speed of the attack. To save invaluable seconds, the first SAS soldiers into action will fast rope to the ground. The plan is extremely dangerous and it ignores a key tactical lesson from history. In 1993, American special forces tried to seize rebel leaders in Somalia by fast roping into Mogadishu. The rebels shot down two Black Hawk helicopters and pinned down the assault force on the ground for 17 hours. 18 US soldiers died in the gun battle. RIP to all the US soldiers out there. RIP to all the UK soldiers out there. I mean, they're trying to do their job, get shot down, shit happens, right? That's war. Like, it's, it's sad, man. Great movie, by the way, if you guys haven't checked out Black Hawk Down, but man, it's crazy that that was real. Military analysts concluded a heavily armored ground force should have been on standby to reinforce the airborne attack. Matter of fact, RIP to all the soldiers that are fighting for their country. You know what I mean? Right or wrong. Some of them probably are brainwashed, don't know it's right or wrong. RIP. No ground force exists for Operation Barris. Even if it did, the terrain would make it impossible to deploy. If things go wrong, the special forces will die in the jungle. Operation Barris is so risky, the men give it a new and darkly ironic name. Operation Certain Death. Day 17, September the 10th, 6.16 a.m. Three Boeing CH-47 Chinook helicopters take off from Waterloo Camp. They carry all 70 SAS commandos and the first of two paratroop attack squads. You are excited. Your adrenaline kicks in. It is going to happen. You are going to go into battle. Chinooks have a top... 70 SAS members? Yeah, buddy. You're cooked. Now you're done. Done though. Speed of 280 kilometers per hour and can carry 45 fully equipped soldiers. They are not normally armed, but these have been rigged with machine guns. Three AH-7 Lynx attack helicopters join the Chinooks at the mouth of Roquel Creek. 60 kilometers to the east, the SAS observation teams move closer to Gaberi Bana. A night of heavy drinking has taken its toll on the West Side boys. Uh oh. Musa is now under guard beside Calais house. Observation teams were predominantly given the task of preventing any interference with the hostages. The SAS stopped less than 50 meters from Major Marshall and his men. 
Okay, so they're tasked with if you see something about go down with the hostages, you kill them. Like you kill those guys, right? That's so. Oh man, those ghillie suits, sick, right? Pretty dope. They were able to sneak up on them like that. Thick jungle, so they work perfect. I mean, this is gonna be. I feel like it's about to get hectic. Six twenty five AM. The helicopters roar up Roquel Creek. They mask the sound of their engines by flying just above the tree line. The SAS have been split into six man fire teams, each with specific targets. The first to hit the ground has the most critical task. It must reach the hostages before the West Side boys can kill them. Six thirty five AM. Major Marshall hears the throb of Here distant helicopter engines. He knows instinctively that a rescue mission is underway. Three key landing zones, or LZs, have been chosen for the attack. A Chinook carrying 45 paratroopers swerves right to an open area 500 meters west of McBenny. You feel quite vulnerable as an infantry soldier. You want to get off the helicopter onto the ground. You don't want the helicopter to be taken out. The two other Chinooks turn towards Gaberi Bana. The first LZ is a clearing near the hostage house. The second is a few hundred meters further north. Musa's guards hear the noise. The sounds of the helicopters keep coming. They kept coming, kept coming. Uh -oh. Helicopter outside. They wake Fode Calais. Seconds later, mayhem erupts. The helicopters lay down a barrage of fire to knock out the rebel defenses. Oh, let's go. Right the As the Chinooks descend, the downdraft rips the roof from Calais' house. I'm scared. I'm scared because I knew that the bitch at that time, the most came with heavy support to come and dislodge me. The command. Wait, so was the dude talking? That was the dude that was captured, right? Like, with them? Mm. But either way, man, either side you're on, you see your big guns, machine guns spraying, houses getting ripped up. Like, yeah, just get back to on. The British dread is given. Kill the hostages. The executioners are less than 30 seconds from the hostage house. But the first fire team still hasn't hit the ground. This is situation critical. Oh man, they gotta get down there. If these killers aren't stopped, they will reach the hostages first, and the entire operation will be a disaster. But unknown to the rebel executioners, I there forgot. is a fourth party in the drama. And I forgot that they're there just waiting on them. Oh, yeah. Over with. After more than a week in the jungle, the SAS forward observation teams break cover and open fire. They're trained to hit each target twice. Upper chest, head, boom, you're down. It's a double tap. Calais henchmen Damn. crumple in a hail of precision marksmanship. Wow. Those boys could shoot. Double tapped one. Pop, pop. To the chest and the head. Done for. Oh. 6.40 a.m. Fire team one fast ropes to the ground and explodes into action. It's a big event. It's a premiere. It happens once, and you want to be part of it. It's a feeling of elation. The sprint to the hostage house takes less than 20 seconds. First, a stun grenade for the guardroom. You go up to the place, and boom, it's over. It takes longer to tell you about it than it does to do it. <laughs> 
Fire Team 1 reaches the hostages. But there's a man missing. The SAS keep the six Rangers under guard. Then they begin searching for Musa. At the same time... Oh, shout out to them, man. They ain't just go and get their boys. They want to get Musa, too. He could, they easily could just took him left, d done with. But, I mean, this dude had loyalty, right? So they got to they gotta do it. Man. Eleven other fire teams fan out from their landing zones. Armor-piercing bullets from their M16A2s shoot straight through the flimsy mud of timber huts. They can't let the West Side boys gather their wits. A single burst of AK-47 fire could bring down one of the Chinooks. Across the river in Magbeni, the paratroopers must crush the rebels fast. Let me know if I'm wrong, but they definitely, I mean, just as technology gets more advanced and advanced, helicopters definitely are not that easy to shoot down no more. You can just spray some AK-47 mag and take one out. I don't think so. Let me know if I'm wrong. Or they will launch a deadly barrage of fire on the SAS, attacking Kaberi Barna. But the landing zone turns out to be a swamp. It was almost chaos when we first got off because people were under the water. People were, you know, it wasn't what was expected on the ground. I was amazed at the time that then no one drowned, to be honest. Then the rebels open fire. The paratroopers are sitting ducks as they struggle to reach cover. In Gaberi Barna, the SAS reach Calais house. There's no sign of the rebel leader. Something moves under the bed. Get out! Out now! It's Calais. What a coward, bro. You have all your boys out there fighting that fear you because you're a fearless leader and you're underneath the bed hiding like a kid. Turkish is watching. I see Gooding capture Kale live. I see knife within the, the get down. The SAS find Calais diamonds. He fears he will now be killed. One of the, the one who captured me, Mike, he wants to use a gunshot, then the commander stopped him. He said no. That's Cal. That's Kelly. Wow. Wow. Kelly is taken prisoner. Six fifty. Musa continues. The SAS take defensive positions. Each soldier has a carefully planned field of fire. They will defend Gaberi Barna until the hostages are airlifted to safety. Musa can hear the gun battle, but he cannot see what is happening. Musa! 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 He's trapped Musa! beneath the wreckage of Calais' roof. Musa, yeah! I heard his voice is calling, Musa, Musa, Musa. Musa, where are you? Musa, where are you? I said, yeah, Musa is here, I'm here. I'm under the roof. Wow. After 17 days of beating, torture, and degradation, Musa is in safe hands. But as he's carried to the evacuation point, gunfire sweeps the village. Many of the rebels have regrouped in the jungle. Now, they counterattack, spurred on by the belief that voodoo will make them bulletproof. 
they fought back and they fought very hard. The SAS fire teams are pinned down. A bullet from an AK-47 ricochets off a building and hits SAS trooper Brad Tinian in the lower back. The bullet exits through his chest, causing massive internal injuries. In Magbeni, there's another major setback. A rebel mortar shell hits the paratroopers' command unit. There was a massive explosion. Then you obviously hear the cries and the screams. All the senior officers are seriously wounded. There's nobody to lead the attack. The West Side boys are fighting back hard on both sides of the river. Operation Barris is turning into a nightmare. 6.55 a.m. This is all within 20 minutes of each other. In Gaberi Bana, SAS trooper Brad Tinian is fatally wounded. His comrades call in air support. Then, with interlocking fields of fire, they hit back with deadly effect. Across the river in Magbeni, Captain Danny Matthews realizes that with his senior officers wounded, he is now in command. The 21-year-old immediately issues orders to kickstart the attack. Your, your role, your responsibility kick in, your training then kicks in. Predominantly, I just wanted to make sure that we didn't lose momentum. Okay, so the senior officers in the parachute regiment all got hurt, so there's no one to lead it. So then he took the reins at 21 years old. That takes some brass, right? Like, that takes some, you know what, of steel. Impressive. As we eventually sort of broke in, there was a massive amount of fire. A lot of it very inaccurate, to be honest. The West Side boys crumble as more than 100 paratroopers sweep through Magbeni. They were bewildered by the sheer speed and, and the aggression and the, the numbers that, that would sort of overwhelm them with so early on and so quickly. 7 a.m., half an hour after the attack started, a Chinook makes a high-speed approach to Gaberi Bana. Sporadic fire is still coming from the jungle. The seven traumatized hostages break for freedom. A lot of emotion was going through me, you know, the feeling of being safe, the feeling of being alive, the feeling of, oh, well, I have not been killed, I am not dead, and because I never knew I was going to see my parents again, I never knew I was going to see my family, my friends, all those people I used to know. Seconds later, the hostages are airborne. Their ordeal is over. The British crush the last pockets of West Side Boy resistance over the next three hours. The entire attack force is gone by 10.30 a.m. British Prime Minister Tony Blair declares Operation Barris a success. And I cannot pay high enough tribute to the skill, the professionalism and above all the courage of the armed forces involved. SAS trooper Brad Tinian is the only British fatality. The West Side boys pay a much heavier price. The official rebel death toll is 26. But blood trails suggest the real body count is much higher. Wow. The remaining West Side boys either surrender or melt into the jungle. Their leader, Fode Calais, is imprisoned. To this day, he denies full responsibility for the crisis. I'm not the one who created the problem. God knew. Because if I'm the one who created the problem, obviously I, I'm supposed to die on that particular day. But so God, so God saved me from that. The destruction of the West Side Boy. Man, shut up. God ain't save you from that, man. He probably just wanted you to live with a life lesson. Like, you just got 26 of your people killed. Because you're an idiot. 
Man, shout out to Musa though. That boy a trooper. Boy shocks other rebel groups in Sierra Leone. They fear they could be next and begin to surrender. Within months, the civil war is over. Musa still bears the scars from his ordeal. But when he revisits Kaberi Ibana, he knows it was worthwhile. Because one wrong turn triggered a sequence of events that changed the course of history. Whatever peace they are, they are enjoying today, I, myself, and those British guys that we are held hostage, we are responsible. Sierra Leone is still a poor country. But now, its people have the chance to prosper. Wow. This is a great documentary. Thank you guys for, uh, you know, recommending this. I mean, it's pretty wild. I hope the UK lets Musa and his family visit the UK. You know what I'm saying? All expensive paid trip type thing. Hopefully they've done something like that for him. Because, I mean, he helped them out. He was resilient, loyal to them. But, man, that was, that was something else. Thank you guys. Please smash that like button if you guys enjoyed it. Hit that subscribe button. Let me know in the comments your guys' thoughts and feelings on this uh, documentary. It's something that I was new to. So it was, uh, it was pretty sweet, man. SAS. Definitely top two best of the best in the world, right? I gotta go, go with my home team, all right? But catch you guys on the next video. Peace.